On my computer, I've created a folder called Learning LibPD iOS, and within that, I have pulled the LibPD iOS repository to the folder, and it's here within this folder, PD for iOS. Now it's time to create my Xcode project. So I will type command space and type Xcode and hit enter. This brings up Xcode and here I'll choose create a new Xcode project. I'll choose iOS application and we want a single view application. I'll choose next and I'll give it a name, my PD project. And we'll choose objective C as the language, not Swift. We won't be doing any Swift in this series of tutorials and we'll develop for iPhone. Now we'll choose next. And here we are taken to a folder that I've actually already set up in advance. But what you want to do is you want to find the folder that contains the LibPD framework that you grabbed from GitHub. And you want to put your project within the same containing folder and choose create. What you want to look for are these three icons in the top right. They open the drawers in Xcode. And you want to make sure that the leftmost one is clicked, and that's the navigator. That's this area over here on the left. What we're going to do now is Command Tab to the Finder. And we're going to drill down into the PD for iOS folder, then into the Live PD folder. Scroll down, and we're going to look for a file livepd.xcodeproj or Xcode Project. Click and drag this into your Xcode project, and we're going to put it just beneath the My PD project. Now, what we've done is the first step in linking our project to the LibPD for iOS. We're going to make sure that this is clicked, the My PD project. This is the root level icon in my folder. In the center, we want to choose Build Phases and then Target Dependencies, and we'll click this disclosure triangle. Then we'll click the plus icon. We're going to choose LibPD iOS. If you don't see this here, then that means you didn't copy this. Uh, LibPD Xcode Proj into your project successfully. So that's the first place you could go wrong. We'll choose Add. Next, we will choose Link Binary with Libraries. And we want to choose this plus icon. And now you need to see Workspace. And just in case it is um, closed, you can open it. And again, we want to choose LibPD iOS.a. I'm going to hold down Command. And we also need to choose the AV Foundation Framework, and the Audio Toolbox Framework, and then choose Add. Okay, I'm still holding Command down, click Add, now I let it go. Okay, so this now presents something really key. LibPD-iOS.a is red. That means right now, this would not work if you tried to compile it and run it. Instead, we need to take this final step of going to Build Settings, and we need to search for the user header search paths, and it's right here. I'm going to double click this, and this is the most important step in this entire process. Here, we're going to tell our Xcode project where it should look for that libpdios.a file. So I'll choose the plus button at the bottom left, and I'm going to type dot dot forward slash and then the name of the um, folder that contains LibPD for iOS. Well, if you forget what that is, Command Tab to the Finder, and let's go up to the root level, and it's just PD-4-iOS. Command Tab back to Xcode, PD-4-iOS. Wait, 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 we're not done. We're not done. If you click OK and you try to do this, you're going to pull your hair out or wish you had hair to pull. Instead, we must click recursive. And what this does is it tells the compiler basically to just go through that folder and find somewhere that libpd.a file. That's not actually what it's called, but you get what I'm going for. With that now, we'll just click off. We'll cross our fingers and choose this button here. It will force it to compile and it'll show us any errors in terms of if we actually connected everything together properly. So here we go. And now what we need to do 
is we need to go to Live PD Xcode Proj, and it wants to change uh, these settings because this file was made a couple Xcode versions ago. Let's just go ahead and do it, and we're going to disable the snapshot. We don't need it. All right, let's stop this and run it again. Okay, and now we see all those big errors, 186 of them. No worries, I'm going to show you in the next movie how we get rid of that.